Hello everyone and welcome back to a brand new video and today we return with round 4 of the F2 Oli Behrman career mode. Yes, we're back today for the Saudi Arabian Grand Prix feature race. If you missed out on the video that went live yesterday from the sprint, I would highly recommend going back and checking it out. Of course, this is probably going to be our best chance of points early on in the season. Of course, we line up, I believe, it's alongside uh, Amory Cordiel, isn't it? On the front row of the grid. But yeah, really looking forward to this one. We learned a lot, obviously, from last weekend's feature race in Bahrain. So things might get a little bit crazy here today. But can we survive? And can we finally get Prima's first points of the year? Hello and welcome to the Jeddah Street Circuit, where the excitement is building for what I'm sure will be an exciting Formula 2 race here in Saudi Arabia. So an interesting circuit, Jeddah. Like some other street circuits in the Formula 2 calendar, it's likely to present a formidable technical challenge with a number of challenging turns for our young drivers to master. Plus, it's a hot track, and that high temperature has some big implications for tyre performance that they'll need to keep in mind in order to secure a good result. As we're now moments away from the off, let's take a look at the grid order in which they'll start today's race. Amory Cordiel lines up on pole position, with Ollie Behrman alongside. Looking down the rest of the grid, we have Martins, Awasa, Zane Maloney, and Daruvula, Porcher, Hauger, Correa, Enzo Fittipaldi, Vesti, Duan, Brad Benavides, Jack Crawford, Hadjar, Leclerc, Bashaw, and Ralph Boschon. Stanek, Miney, Novelak, and Roy Nisani completes the grid. Now it's almost time to lights out, so let's get down to the track. Right, well, here we are then. Track side for the Saudi Arabian GP sprint race then. And we know that tyre strategy is going to be a very, very weird one here today. Um, yeah, it, it, apparently it is a glitch inside the game. That means obviously we can't really change anything about the strategy, but we're really going to try and just go very, very short on the set of the medium tyres there. Of course, we should theoretically have an advantage over the AI. Obviously, that safety car that came out last time meant that we've actually done less laps on the mediums than pretty much anyone else this weekend. So that might give us a fighting chance against most of the runners here today. Everyone looks to be on the mediums ready for the start. It is going to be five red lights then here in Saudi. And it is going to be light, so, and away we go there. And Amory Cordiel gets off to an absolute snoozer as we head down in towards Turn 1. He's going to try and fight it back there. And the Belgian driver is just like going to get back down the inside through that first corner. But still going to be side by side on the exit then. Obviously, had that nightmare in yesterday's sprint race. Yeah, look at that Cordiel able to get the power down. Unable to hang on to the lead when it all is said and done there. But a lot of understeer as we try and make our way through this opening sector. You can see just how warm these tyres are. That's very, very lucky. I've definitely learnt that these F2 cars are much less likely to bottom out than the F1 cars inside F123. So that death curb still, still screams of death, but not as badly as it does in the F1 cars there. But yeah, really early laps here are going to absolutely whoa, give an advantage to those drivers that were careful on their tyres yesterday. You can see Awasa and Zane Maloney there both gaining some places early on. But we need to try and stick oh, with Amory Cordier as best as possible. So we just nudge the wall there. That's not going to do me any favours this afternoon. Front wing damage there. I mean, very, very minor. We might just have knocked the end plate slightly. Or something like that. So don't think it's going to cost us too much. We can see just how much we're struggling to get the car dialed in where I need it on this opening lap. We're still just inside the range of the young Belgian at the front of the field. Or not such a young Belgian. If I remember correctly, Amory Cordiel. Certainly, you know, up there with Nassani and Boschong for experience when it comes to FIA Formula 2. But out of the final corner, though, we are about going to survive lap one as Cordiel's in. Look at that, Amory Cordiel from the lead of the race instantly into the pit lane there. A handful of other cars as well, including my teammate Fred Vesti. And that's just how bizarre these races have become pretty much immediately. Code is EA, probably need to look into this, but I'm embracing the chaos for now. 
is going to mean at the very least that we get a lap led under our belt here. But I think it was Richard Vashore, wasn't it? And I want to say Brad Benavidez, who obviously had those mechanical failures yesterday. And this is kind of the utterly bizarre thing um, with Formula 2 at the moment on this game. Is, of course, they've now got a theoretically massive advantage for the rest of the weekend there. Because they didn't do the entire sprint race. Because uh, obviously their tyres are going to be in much better shape than anyone else's. But I think, yeah, now obviously we know that the AI are forced onto this two-stop as well. It kind of reduces some of the pressure put on us early on in the campaign. But as we make our way then down into the pit lane, there we go. Yep, Brad Benavidez is going to stay out then in the lead of the race. So the American there is going to get his first laps led in FIA Formula 2. Are we going to get held up in the pit lane, though? Yes, we are, quite badly, actually, as pretty much, yeah, everyone else then diving down. So where are we going to come out relative to Amory Cordeal? Looks like we haven't been jumped by anyone, luckily. Um, so we, we've still got that in mind. But, yeah, all of those cars that boxed one lap earlier have got quite the undercut on us. A massive undercut, actually. Look at Fred Vesti. So we've come out pretty much alongside our teammate here. We should be able to get him off the exit. But suddenly down, we're, we're fourth in the queue now. So that really hasn't worked out well. Undercuts are definitely still the way to go. Whether it's F1 or F2, inside F123. And of course now, because the DRS has been enabled as well, we're slightly on the back foot against all these other drivers around me that have obviously had a lap to try and build up some heat in the tyres. So Victor Martins, Jay and the Ruvula. All we can really hope for, of course, is that obviously we get the kind of advantage back at the end of the race. But if they can keep out of the DRS range, we could be in trouble here. But at least both Premers are in the points. We've had a bit of a nightmare opening three rounds. Um, but, of course, the other question is, what will Vashore and Benavidez be able to do? Can they one-stop this? Here comes Vesti, though, down the inside at Turn 1. We'll try and defend from my teammate as best as possible. We should just about be able to put the power down off the exit of Turn 1. He's not going to give up on it just yet. The break late into the S's there, but we just about get the car slowed down around the outside. But this is costing us time to those cars up the road. Well, luckily around a track like Jeddah, the DRS doesn't seem to be particularly overpowered. I think that, and we appear to be running a tiny bit less wing than most of the AI. But yeah, I think if Benavidez and Vashaw can get to about lap 7, lap 8, then, well, yeah, they're dead set to go to the end of this GP. This is what we want to see, though. Martins and Daruvala side by side as they make their way back into towards Turn 1. Hopefully that can allow myself and this whole host of cars behind me to close in slightly. And you can see there, Daruvala loses a good 6, 7 tenths. Well, almost a half distance then this afternoon. And yeah, I can't help but feel that Benavidez and Vashaw here look set to absolutely dominate this race, of course. We're still going to have fresher tyres throughout the second half of the GP, but there's still a good 10-15 seconds up the road as we make our way through the final corner. Benavidez into the pit lane. I think Vashore has followed him. Yes, he has. So, unless they get caught out in some traffic for a couple of laps, this could be trouble for everyone else. Team quite happy with the tyres. They, they definitely won't go to the end, though. We'd be in a world of hurt if we tried to stretch these right the way through. Um, but yeah, of course, we are now going to be back up into P4. But we're still going to be working that undercut right towards the end of the race. Got yellows out. Someone's got issues. Don't say that's Amory Cordial at the front. No, I think it's Vesti. My teammate, Fred Vesti, looks to be dropping out of the Saudi Arabian GP feature race here. And Prima's bad start to the season just keeps getting worse and worse there. Might get a safety car out of this. Team want us in at the end of this lap as Daruvala and Martan still duking it out for that P2. But Fred Vesti out then of the Saudi feature race. What another nightmare. Right, well, boxing in then at the end of this lap. And this might be absolutely critical because if none of our top three do, we've got a chance to try and undercut. We're still in trouble against Benavidez. Um, and, Ra uh, sorry, not Ralph Boshong, Richard Vashaw here. But no, everyone... Diving into the pit lane then at the end of lap 8. Car behind me opts to stay out. That was a Yumo Oasa, I believe. But are we going to get held up in traffic again then? This is the problem, obviously, with being with Prima. 
is that they often find themselves... Oh, look at that! No, Cordille's stuck as well. Come on, we need to go. No! Oh, as we watch Cordille s sail down the pit lane, we get caught out in a bit of traffic there. We might get the jump still on Jeruvula. No, we don't. Jeruvula gets out in front of me. Where's Victor Martans in all of this? I think Martans as well has broken free a lot, lot earlier. No, there he is. He's, well, he's gained time out of it. But it's only a couple of seconds. So we've now got Daruvala right in my clutches. But Martans and Amory Cordille getting away in much cleaner shape. It's the only thing that really helps us against Vashore and uh, Benavidez here is that they're going to tyres are going to be absolutely wrecked by the end of this. We did six laps on this set and they were up towards 60% wear. Their tyres are going to be closer to 80% by the end of this race. And we're going to have much, much fresher rubber. All those other cars then into the pit lane. So Yuma Wasa might be able to get an overcut on us as we try and put the power down out of the final turn. AI definitely, yeah, seem a lot stronger on this year's game as well. There is a Wasa, but I think we might be safely clear of him. As we make our way down into towards turn one. No, we won't. There's a Yuma Wasa, sorry. So a Wasa's got the overcut this time around on both the Ruvula and I. And what looked like a battle with the podium early on might only be a handful of points. This is how quickly the tables will turn in FIA Formula 2. And we are paying the price. Which for sure somehow now sets a new fast lap of the day. We've got more yellow flanks though. Safety car now. Oh, we've got a virtual safety car. Who's gone? Zane Maloney out of the race. I and Jack Doohan. But a virtual safety car doesn't really help us much. Oh, safety car. Okay, now we've got a chance. Well, Brad Benavidez, Richard Vashore are in big, big trouble now towards the end of the race. Their tyres won't get as worn out by the chequered flag. But they are going to be under a lot of pressure from a huge heap of cars late on in the day. It's only going to be a one-lap safety car, though, because we just haven't got that much racing left to do. Right, well, we've got two laps to go then, and things are about to get chaotic here. Two laps at Jeddah always sounds quite scary, but when we've got some slow cars at the front and plenty of drivers fancying opportunities there, Jay and Aruvula needs to get on with it through the final corner. Tiny bit of contact with the MP Motorsport car, but when are we going to go? I think now we've just been caught out a tiny bit by that there. We almost nailed the restart, but will we be able to have a look down the inside of the MP Motorsport driver down in towards Tom? We've got to go for it last moment. Oh, I've fired it in though. Down the inside of a Yuma Wasser as well. There, somehow we get it stopped through that first corner. And have we been able to navigate the pair of them? No, a Wasser just has the power down off of the corner. But we've navigated Daruvula, driver that I've spent most of the afternoon behind. But yeah, surely for sure. And Brad Benavidez are going to be really, really struggling on those tyres throughout these final couple of laps here. And it's now just a question of how quickly can the likes of Cordille, Martans, Oh, Asa and myself get round them, if we can get round them before the race is down and out. Heading down in towards the bank turn 12, though. Oh, we're just trying to get these tyres back up. Definitely feel like we're struggling a bit for grip late on in the day. Whoa, you can just see there again. Nice little tank slapper as we try and get on the throttle. But come on, we can do this. We can get a good result here. Still, I mean, no, no. That might be us in big trouble. One more lap to go and suddenly all of the kind of methodology here has been turned on its head. It's not a question of can we win. It's a question of can we hang on now. That wing damage is going to be really costly through the S's and we may as well wave goodbye to Awasa up the road. We still want to try and score Premier's first points of the year. No one behind me is going to have DRS in towards the final lap. But they're still battling up the front. I think Benavidez is just trying to hang on. Richard Vashaw is trying to go for it. As all, there's some scrapping going on behind me. Correa has muscled his way past Jay and Ruvula as well there. And that gives me a tiny bit of free space as we head back down in towards someone there. They're side by side, I think, for the lead of the race as well. Is Richard Vashaw going to take it on the final lap there? Cordial, I think, just watching behind there. As, uh, it is going to be Brad Benavidez still able to put the power down. Out of turn one, I think he's got the inside line. And Brad Benavidez, I want to say, has hung on for now. 
the young American looking set to take victory here in just his second weekend of FIA Formula 2. And I can already see the comments from you guys now telling me just how unrealistic this game is at the moment. But you know what? We've got to enjoy it. We've got to savour it whilst we can inside F123. Correa all over my gearbox as we head back down in through the hairpin for the final time here. We're just trying to park it on the apexes, make sure we get the throttle down where we can there. But we've lost all sense of confidence rubbing it down the wall of the exit of the corner. But are we going to see Benavidez hang on? Are we going to see him and Vashore's tyres give up the ghost in the final half a lap here of the Saudi Arabian GP weekend? Correa is still looking this way and that to try and find a way around myself. But we are just sat in the middle of the road, desperate to try and hang on here. A little bit of front locking as we tip it through the fast chicane for the final time. But I think... I want to say Brad Benavidez is going to do this as he makes his way down in towards the final corner. We're still under increasing pressure from Correa. We've got to try and force him the long way around if he goes for it. But somehow, despite being on much, much older tyres, for sure, and Benavidez are going to hang on. And I want to say it's going to be PHM taking a win here. Brad Benavidez is on top in Formula 2. Here's our winner pulling there. PHM by Charouz into Park Ferme then. What a fantastic race. And I have to wonder, Davide Valsecchi, just what set them apart from the competition here? This race, yeah. this win, was about one thing and one thing only. Consistency. Anyone can be quick for just one lap, but there's a difference between that and being quick every lap, over and over and over. If you can do that, if you can gain ground when your opponents make mistakes, but then not make mistakes on your own. You can just push and push. Here come our winning drivers then out onto the podium at the end of a thrilling race. The drama and excitement are over and it's time to let it all sink in. Congratulations to our top three today. After this round of the World Championship, here's how things look in the driver's table. After that brilliant race, Richard Vashore deposes the championship leader and takes top spot in the standings. And now, Davide Valsecchi, let me ask you, who is your driver of the day? I'll probably go for Brad Benavides. The team did a good job with the strategy to put him in the pack, and he was good enough to take the opportunities. And here's how things are shaping up in the team's championship. We saw a dip in form from the championship leaders today. Their lead has taken a significant blow. Another team that excelled today was Dams, who make further progress up the table. Well, what a weekend that has been. Please join us next time for another thrilling instalment when Formula 2 returns. Well, there we go then. Brad Benavidez is a Formula 2 race winner from P13 on the grid. Once again, the one-stop strategy there coming clutch for him and Richard Vashaw. Amri Cordiel probably deserved to win that one, but we'll walk away with a podium there ahead of Martans Awasa. We get our first points of the campaign. I can be pretty happy with that, but definitely know we've got a bit more pace in the car there. Correa, Hauger, Fittipaldi, and the other American of Jack Crawford will round out our top 10 when all is said and done there. Daruvala actually retired from the race. Something must have happened to him on the final lap there. Uh, Jack Doohan, Zay Maloney, and Fred Vesti all unable to see it too the checkered flag there but he means championship wise yeah Richard for sure uh, picking up some good feature races there by virtue of getting screwed in the sprint races so far this campaign uh, Amri Cordiel though is up to P2 Brad Benavidez jumps all the way to P3 ahead of Martans there uh, Clem and Teo Porche just behind him we should be up then tied for P15 alongside Cushmany there and just one point behind Crawford and Enzo Fittipaldi, and it just leaves Leclerc, Vesti, Nassani, Stanek, Boshong, and Duan still yet to get off the starting blocks there. It does mean Prima jump Campos as well uh, in the Constructors' Championship with just three points back behind Dams 
and Carl in there. But yeah, Teo Porcher carrying, uh, obviously, with ART. One point clear of Van Amersport there with Virtuosi and MP tied for third place as well. It's going to be a very, very unpredictable throughout the entirety of this season. But I'm very, very much looking forward to it. Thank you all so much for watching. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure to leave a like. Get yourself subscribed. And we will be back next weekend then when Formula 2 heads to the land down under for its debut weekend of the Australian Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss that. A massive thank you to all of my YouTube members and my Patreon supporters for their continued donations to help my work. These things go much further than I think a lot of you ever realise and allow me to continue making content full-time here on YouTube. So if you want to support me from as little as £1 a month and be featured on all of these end clips, either click the join button next to the subscribe or head over to my Patreon. There's a link down in the description.